Sir Benjamin Netanyahu believes Israel military military action Israeli military action is needed to eliminate the Iranian nuclear threat. But mul but multiple other administration officials warned against an Israeli attack. Defense Secretary Robert Gates said in April such a strike would have dangerous consequences and asserted Tehran's acquisition of a bomb can be prevented only if Iranians themselves decide it's too costly. His views have since been echoed by other Obama officials, such as White House National Security Advisor Jim Jones. Gates visited Israel several weeks ago, purportedly to dissuade Jerusalem from any action until Obama's diplomacy is given a chance. Obama has sent a rough deadline for this fall for an answer from Iran about whether the country will talk. The deadline was postponed from a previous uh, rough deadline of June. Uh, Gates said if Iran doesn't come to the bargaining table soon, the next stop could be harsher international sanctions. Israeli officials, however, stress sanctions are a long-term solution and that Iran is quickly acquiring the ingredients necessary to assemble a nuclear bomb. Estimates in Jerusalem average between 6 and 12 months before Iran might have the ability to begin assembling a nuclear warhead. Israelis are worried that Iran might use Obama's proposed talks as a smokescreen to continue continue secretly developing nuclear weapons technology. Yes, uh, that's exactly what they're going to do. Uh, you know, they can claim talk, talk, talk all they want. I mean, there's such a minute chance that they would actually stop making nuclear weapons. But the big emphasis on this article is that uh, the dirty little secret that maybe nobody want, uh, doesn't know is that Arabs are not uh, unified in the sense that, yeah, the Saudis don't want Iran or virtually any other uh, Islamic nuclear power to have nuclear, uh, nuclear weapons because it threatens them because the Arabs fight amongst themselves to certain degrees and the different factions of Islam uh, you know they don't have stable governments and if they have a nuclear bomb you have you can have another uh, uh, Saddam Hussein situation and they want the status quo you know not not uh, the chance of a nuclear bomb going off over their heads now for Bloomberg.com. Hezbollah readies for war as UN can only observe. Uh, this is from August 21st. In a Lebanese village 10 miles west of the Israeli border, black-capped Hezbollah militiamen stand guard in front of a suspected weapons cache. cache. Even though they are unarmed, their presence deters the United Nations peacekeepers from approaching the house in Kerbet Silam preventing the UN troops from fulfilling their mission, which is to stop Hezbollah from rearming. The UN can't just come around here and go into people's houses, said Rasan Salam, a, a municipal official in the village of a Hezbollah militia member. Our weapons are to defend Lebanon. Hezbollah's efforts to stockpile arms became obvious on July 14th, when weapons hidden in the house of a village blew up, according to officials from the UN interim force in Lebanon. Four days later, peacekeepers looking for arms tried to raid the house the militiamen now guard, about a kilometer from the one that exploded. Villagers stoned the soldiers, injuring 14, and blocked the incursion. Hezbollah, which has the backing of Iran and Syria, is rebuilding its force in the south, undaunted by its loss in Lebanon's June elections, which is a, in which a pro-U.S. coalition won a parliamentary majority. The peacekeeper's stay in South Lebanon expires August 31st, and the UN Security Council must decide whether to extend it without change or authorize them to impose the weapons ban by force, even without the support of the Lebanese army. The 12,000 UN soldiers were sent to Lebanon after a 2006 war with Israel that began when Hezbollah, which the US and Israel consider a terrorist organization, captured two Israeli soldiers in a cross-border raid. After the fighting ended, the Security Council passed a resolution prohibiting weapons of, of authority in Lebanon other than that of the Lebanese state. The peacekeepers were deployed to keep South Lebanon free of Hezbollah's militia and arms, the role they have to perform with the cooperation of the Le Lebanese army. The Lebanese military can't disarm Hezbollah, says Elas Hanna, a former Lebanese army general and political science professor in Beirut's, in Beirut's Notre Dame University. Half the army is Shiite and will not fight Shiites, he said. The military sat out of the 2006 conflict. 
Prime Minister designate Saad Harari said Hezbollah's disarmament will be sub subject to a national dialogue. A former spokesman for the peacekeepers said that the problem is that the UN operates under passive rules that depend on the host country's consent. In the south, Hezbollah, not the government of Lebanon, is the real host, she said. Israel is also violating the UN resolution with daily air surveillance flights over Lebanon, according to uh, the peacekeeper spokesman. Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak told Army Radio on August 4th that Hezbollah has stockpiled more than 40,000 rockets, and if there's a conflict in our, on our northern border, we will use all, necess all necessary force. Hezbollah leader Sheikh Hassan Nasrali appeared on a giant screen at a Beirut rally on August 14th and warned that the group would bomb Tel Aviv as Israel bombed the Lebanese capital. In the 2006 war, Israel bombed Lebanon and sent in troops backed by tanks. Hezbollah struck back, firing 4,000 rockets across the border. More than, a hundred, more than a thousand Lebanese, mostly civilians, died and 120 Israeli soldiers and 43 civilians were killed. War is probably inevitable, though no one can say when it might come. Hezbollah is busy trying to develop deterrence of an Israeli invasion. Analysts in Beirut say Hezbollah is buttressing its defenses based on part-time village units supplemented by full-time militiamen who operate anti-tank weapons and inaccurate short-range rockets. The group is gathering Russian-made SA-8 radar-guided anti-aircraft missiles that can shoot down fighter planes and has SA-18 shoulder-fired missiles that are used against helicopters. Uh, Hezbollah plans to send commandos into Israel and obtain long-range missiles uh, to hit town south of Haifa. In the next war, Hezbollah will want to use counter-offensive methods. Hezbollah is setting the bar high for itself. Hezbollah officials wouldn't comment on specific weapons or tactics. Of course they are rearming said Shalomo Brom, a former director of strategic planning in the Israeli army. We are also rearming. The Israeli army said it tracks Hezbollah military buildup through both visible and, vis and invisible means, and it is ready to act in any point in time. Kennedy said that the UN mission has succeeded. There is no fighting, he said. It's up to the UN commanders to raid or not. In coordination with the Lebanese army, we have not witnessed weapons being brought into the south, he said. He wouldn't speculate whether arms had been smuggled in or even say whether he heard of such a thing. In 2006, Israeli troops didn't reach Kirbat Salim, though it was uh, shelled and bombed, residents say. In the villages nearby, Hezbollah members said taking away their weapons is out of the question. This was never in doubt. Never, said Hosama Rahman, the mayor of a nearby border town. This article shows that how the Middle East always stays in a constant state of perpetual war or on the verge of, of perpetual war um, conflicts arise every so often and then there's some sort of war or skirmish and then there's a bit of peace but there really is no peace it's just this lull as people as the as the forces rebuild themselves and uh, and you know and it was even worse last time in 2006 because Israel didn't have a dominating victory. They, nothing really was resolved. They just basically went back to the way things were. They didn't get their soldiers, and they didn't stop Hezbollah, they, which emboldened the Islamic factions, which is why this next war, I think, is going to be even worse, because uh, that was the first time since they since like the Six-Day War and Yom Kippur and ever that the Islamic side actually fought Israel to approximate standstill. And... Uh, so they're itching for the next conflict, and you know, and it's and that's what the Muslims do. They'll they'll lick their wounds a while, rebuild a bit, and and it'll come. The next battle will come. Next article: Ayatollah pushes Islamic resistance army, proposes Syria-Iran access to fight Israel-U.S. After calling for a regional military alliance under the banner of Islamic Messianic Mahdi. Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei, along with President Mohammad Ahmadinejad, is continuing the push for a regional resistance army against Israel and the United States. According to report, Al Arabiya, the proposed for uniting was to raise up a unified regional resistance to fight Israel and the U.S. 